Thank you, Deacon. Yeah, um, good evening, everyone. And um, first of all, just thank you very much for the opportunity to, um, to, to speak to you this evening. Um, I'm Commander Vinso, and I'm the captain in HMS Defender. Uh, and we're currently sitting alongside in Portsmouth Harbour uh, with 10 days to go until, uh, until we deploy uh, on our global deployment with the UK Carrier Strike Group. So um, at the moment, it's uh, the final preparations uh, for our deployment. So I'm, I'm delighted that we've managed to make the, uh, have the opportunity to speak to you all um, this evening. Um, first thing I'd just like to say is, Deacon, we very much value the affiliation we have with the Hammerman and also the city of Glasgow um, and the support we all enjoy. Um, I've looked through when I took over as captain 12 months ago, I was given a, a good handover by my predecessor, um, Richard Hewitt, about the, uh, the support they'd enjoyed. And it's one of the biggest regrets I've had so far in the 12 months I've been on board that, number one, I haven't been able to come up to Glasgow and bring the ship or myself to, to meet with you. Uh, and number two, I haven't been able to offer a um, a visit down to the ship as well for the for the Hammerman. Uh, what I've got here this evening, I've got um, Matthew's been interest, uh, introduced already as the Deputy Marine Engineering Officer, and we're just planning to speak for about 15 minutes about um, HMS Defender, the, the capabilities we've got, um, particularly the engineering aspects, uh, and then what the ship's been doing since we last visited Glasgow, which was in uh, March 2019 uh, and then a little bit about the deployment we're about to go on the exciting carrier strike group deployment um, with the uh, HMS Queen Elizabeth and the F-35 jets where we're away until uh, until December with um, 3,700 personnel all deploying together in, in the strike group so it's really exciting time at the moment for the Royal Navy and uh, we're very lucky in HMS Defender to be to be part of that. Um, and at the end, very happy to answer any questions that you may have about any anything at all. We'll, we'll do our best to answer that. So um, I'll hand over now to um, to my DMEO. Uh, yeah, so um, I'm the Deputy Marine Engineering Officer Board. So um, I'm second in charge of the Marine Engine Department. We've got a department of between 30 and 40 engineers. And obviously, our, our, our struggle basically is... Uh, making sure we get this, you know, fantastic vessel out to sea. You can see there we're the, we're the fifth in line of the six vessels, the Type 45 uh, destroyer class. Uh, and basically, I, I've been quite fortunate in that um, I brought Daring out of build back in uh, 2006. So I spent some time up in Scotston uh, Harbour Flats and enjoyed the uh, the local entertainment there. Uh, and I was also fortunate to be on HMS Duncan and brought the last class out of build uh, later on in 2010. So... I've been in and around these uh, platforms for quite some time and um, I'm starting to understand the struggles of the engineering and the uh, challenges they bring for us. Um, you see there, she's, uh, for those of you who visited her, she is quite a substantial vessel, a displacement of about um, 8,000 tonnes, which was back in 2017. But um, as with all good women um, and age and uh, capability upgrades, she's probably more of a perfect size eight now. Uh, in, since her refit in 2018, where basically I got to look after and refit. So she got quite a bit heavy on that time whilst we fitted more weapon systems. She's 152 metres long. Um, in comparison, the pre predecessor of this type of platform, the Type 42 destroyer, was uh, three and a half to 4,000 tonnes. And, you know, the same crew, but carrying out the same sort of evolutions, which, you know, is quite impressive in terms of size. Um, okay, so over to the engineering side of things, she's a, a fully integrated electrical propulsion system. Uh, so we've got two Rolls-Royce WR21 gas turbines, which are capable of producing um, up to 21 megawatts each. Uh, they're our prime movers, essentially. So they're, they're, they're basically re uh, responsible for the propulsion system. Um, we've got two diesel engines, uh, Wartzilla V12s. They're capable of producing two megawatts. Uh, and they're more for producing sort of hotel services when we're alongside. Um, and also uh, sort of emergency recovery engines should we lose propulsion from the prime movers. The system's designed to run on just one gas turbine, uh, feeding sort of a power station setup, which is great for us. It means we can be uh, more fuel efficient. Um, the engines are specifically designed to be more fuel efficient uh, than, than the counterparts um, with, with the marinization and the extra bits of kit that we've got bolted onto them. As you can see from the slide, we've got two advanced induction motors, both uh, rated at 20 megawatts. Um, and that gives a speed that we declare of 30 knots. But actually, 
the, the during a recent trial period, um, the commanding officer had a bit of a bet with our propulsion manager as to what speed we could achieve, and he actually lost a bottle of gin to the propulsion manager because uh, we achieved 35 knots, albeit um, down the crest of a wave of wind behind us. But yeah, uh, all you know, all the impressive bits there from you know getting 8,000 tons of warship through the water at um, you know 30 knots is quite improve, uh, quite impressive for us. In terms of the propulsion system, you see there about reliability. Um, as, as with all sort of ships, we, we end up having sort of uh, issues surrounding the reliability, which happens with all you know in the early stages of their life. So we've just recently had um, a program started called the Equipment Improvement Program. They're um, really small change the ship to better cope with hotter climates. Um, when we trialled these ships, it was uh, off the cold waters of Scotland, um, so we didn't really experience the higher temperatures. Um, we took her down to America. Um, myself and the commanding officer actually served together on that deployment uh, uh, back quite some time ago. And again, the water temperatures down there didn't really test the plant to what um, what we expected. Uh, and then since we've been operating down in the Gulf, we experienced probably only for six or seven weeks of the summer, um, some, some hiccups in terms of the propulsion system. Um, but the equipment improvement program um, allowed us to overcome those um, with something called a temperature limiting switch. Uh, and all that does is just stops the propulsion motors from demanding more than what the gas turbines are capable of. So since then, the propulsion system has been uh, significantly more reliable, um, and uh, which allows us to be more flexible in the operations we carry out. The second part of it is uh, the propulsion improvement program. Um, as I discussed earlier, the, there's two WR21 gas turbines and two diesel engines. Now, you know, maths will tell you that there's not much redundancy in the system there, especially since the two diesel engines, just down to two megawatts, um, are designed just to bring the lights back on should there be an issue, uh, not necessarily to drive the propulsion system. While they can, um, they can't give us much speed. So it doesn't give us much flexibility when we're doing um, various operations outside what the ship was originally designed for, which is the carrier strike operation, which we'll come on to later. So what we're now having fitted is we're, we're actually removing the two smaller diesel engines and having three, three megawatt diesel engines fitted. Uh, and that gives us a lot more flexibility, a lot more redundancy uh, in operation. So when we're not whizzing around lot, uh, 24 knots trying to launch aircraft along with the aircraft carrier, um, we can actually operate at lower speeds when we're doing things like boarding operations and uh, you know, counter piracy and things like that. Okay, so I'll just hand you back over to the commanding officer now. I was going to talk a bit more about the capability of the ship uh, outside the engines and the engineering. Yeah, thank you. Uh, thank you, dear Mio. Yeah, the slide here just kind of talks about the capability of the ship. Um, it's my third time I've served on a Type 45. I've previously been a principal warfare officer on HMS Daring. Uh, and then prior to that, I was also the flight commander with the, uh, the Lynx helicopter in uh, HMS Daring as well about 12 years ago. So um, I'm really familiar with this ship. Uh, it really is, you know, Type 45s are just world leading um, air defense destroyers and the, the capability the ship has is um, is phenomenal. And I, despite having worked on it twice before, every time I walk back to the ship, you know, I look at it and I still get a kind of shiver on the back of my neck when I when I see the, the ship and the capability we've got with it. We will be deploying, as I say, in 10 days time and we'll be sailing with a, a crew, uh, men and women, around about 240 um personnel with us and that's uh, our complement standard crew plus additional personnel we've got a Royal Marine boarding team with us and we've got our embarked flight uh, and no, no, uh, a number of other additionals so I'm expecting around about 240 personnel uh, to sail with us for our seven and a half month deployment as Demio's mentioned you know I've been on board and I, I think the top speed I've seen on here is 33.8 knots on the the data I was shown by the by the engineers but you know a phenomenal achievement when you think at 8,000 tons of warship uh, it is again a, just a great capability it's listed on the slide the the kind of weapon fit we have type 45 destroyer uh, is principally designed to be an air and missile defense unit uh, and the thing that makes us so good is our radar suite, as well as the Sea Viper missile. And you can see the missile silo in the uh, photo on the top right there. We have 48 Sea uh, Viper missiles and a really a, a great capability. And we're designed to um, provide this defense to a task group 
uh, and in particular the UK Carrier Strike Group for the uh, deployment that we're going on uh, this year. But in addition to that, we, it's, you know, we've, the, the great thing with the Royal Navy and the ship is the flexibility with the capability we have. Um, we can do the, you know, the high end war fighting tasking that the, the kit does there and then all the way through um, boarding teams, embargo operations, all the way through to, to disaster relief support. And when I deployed in HMS Daring in 2013, 2014, uh, we circumnavigated the globe. And uh, during that time, there was a Typhoon Haiyan in the Philippines. Uh, and again, we were able to provide life-saving support, uh, being the first on the ground post the uh, typhoon coming through. So, you know, really rewarding work and seeing the uh, impact you can have as uh, as an organisation firsthand there. So that the ship is flexible and the tasking we'll do over the next seven and a half months, we're, you know, we're we're ready to kind of deal with whatever kind of tasking that the ship's asked to, asked to deliver. So uh, a highly capable ship um, and reliable. The, talk about in a second that the ship did a seven and a half month deployment to the Middle East um, in 2019 getting back in March 20 but ship didn't lose one day's tasking for any defects at all so you know the reliability of Defender and Type 45 is is really um, second to none and I, I you know we will sail it, sail in 10 days time and I'll have as captain you know, full confidence in the kit and my people to be able to deliver whatever we're asked to do over the over the period of the deployment so a really great job for me a real privilege and a, a real fantastic capability uh, and we will be deploying with one wildcat helicopter uh, with us for the entire trip as well but we can also take a, a slightly larger helicopters as well yeah so uh, this is a photo of us um what, january we came out we went to dry dock in uh, december november december um, and that's just a photo of us in uh, dry dock. And I don't think the picture really does it justice it, when you stand underneath it and the sheer size of it. But there's uh, one of the engineers there standing below the props to give a bit of scale. But since the ship last visited Glasgow in March 19, we conducted the Middle East deployment uh, period of high tensions at, um, over the over the deployment there. So the ship was really called, called upon to do its um, duty there. Uh, returned to the UK in March. Uh, so just over 13 months ago to find the UK, just getting back after seven and a half months away to find the UK. It was a weekend the UK went into lockdown. Uh, so my sailors came back and found a very different um, different home life experience to, to what they left and were expecting to come back to. So that's been an interesting challenge. But But since we returned in March, everything the ship has done in the, the kind of 13 months since has been all about us generating and getting ready to go away with the UK carrier strike group. So we we had a, a maintenance period and then a small turnover of cr crew kind of May, June time. July and August, we had a six week window where we went down to Plymouth with the flag officer, sorry, fleet officer sea training organisation where we were put through our paces with a full range of um, air, surface, subsurface threats, force protection exercises, uh, and concurrently dealing with damage control and uh, fires, floods and defect rectification. So crew put through their full paces over a six week period uh, and the ship did fantastic, uh, you know, came through with flying colours. Uh, so we completed that training and then in September we joined up with the uh, HMS Queen Elizabeth uh, and the strike group with the F-35 jets on board and off the coast of Scotland uh, for a couple of weeks. Our first period of integration training with her and some of the other escorts uh, to set us up for the deployment this year. Uh, and then in November, we had a, a big um, maintenance package, really to the main pro reason for that was to uh, capability enhancements. So some of my sensor fit has been enhanced and improved. Uh, so November through to February, the, the ship went through the maintenance period um, and then got back to sea again at the end of February, early March and uh, conducted our, our work up trials um, to make sure the ship uh, is all ready for, for the deployment. And uh, we then are getting ready uh, to join up. This, that photo there on the top left was in September. Uh, you can see the Queen Elizabeth in the, uh, in the centre of that with the jets on, uh, and then the two ships at the front at the bottom, uh, two of our Type 23 frigates that will be coming with us. Uh, one of them is HMS Kent, and the other one that will be joining us will be HMS Richmond. Uh, the two RFAs we had with us uh, either side of the uh, aircraft carrier and then 
in the top row there, there's the two Type 45s, uh, HMS Defender on the left-hand side as you look at it, and HMS Diamond flanking on the right-hand side. And in, the, in between us, we have uh, the USS Sullivan's, uh, an American ship coming with us, and they will be doing the deployment with us. Uh, and also the um, one of the Netherlands units, the Ebbetson, uh, just to the uh, to the right as you look at it. So a, a large task group. Um, it will be the first time that the UK Carrier Strike Group has deployed, uh, and the whole aim of the uh, deployment really is to prove the UK strike capability. Uh, and you can see the uh, fifth generation F-35 jets in the uh, in the bottom right there, which um, which will be coming with us. So it's it's a really exciting uh, deployment. Uh, my ship's company, the men and women here, are, are really enthused, excited, uh, fully trained, and you know the, we're now just in the final kind of days before we deploy. Final preparations being made, and um, seven and a half months. Firstly, off to the Mediterranean, then out to the uh, Western Pacific, and then coming back again. So a, a, a really uh, exciting global Britain message that's been pushed by the government that um, you know the Carrier Strike Group is is supporting that message. Um, that's everything I've got um, to chat through. I'm very happy to open to questions. I'll just have a look to uh, DMEO if he's got any other points. Anything else to talk about? Uh, just, just probably to to emphasise the you know the engineering challenge we're facing with the carrier strike group. Um, I think we're envisaged to cover about twenty thousand miles during this deployment, uh, and just sort of the engineering preparations we've been making um, for for instance, provide you know pr producing the fuel plan. We go into some challenging stops where you know we don't regularly visit. We use 50 tons of fuel a day, um, so we're going to have to you know manage the ability to replenish at sea quite well. Um, and obviously, you know, it looked forward into these stops to make sure that the fuel quality we're going to receive is going to be sufficient. The other challenge is things like managing waste. Um, just for instance, we you know a weekend at sea we produce three um, extremely large skips full of of, of garbage. If we're to sustain at sea for any period of time, then um, we, we have to process that uh, uh, waste through various machinery we've got on board. Uh, and we can reduce, um, just for to give you an example, the last weekend we did at sea, um, we managed to keep all that down to three slugs of, of plastic, which, um, we, which we, we dispose of when we get back alongside. So, you know, we can, it, it's quite an impressive feat in the engineering challenge. The other one is things like um, water production. We use 60 tonnes of water a day. And this ship is actually capable of producing 120 tonnes. So making sure those three reverse osmosis plants we use for water production are kept top line and, and, and available is going to be crucial to a sustainable for the deployment. And then the last bit is just the preparations in terms of um, things like the hot climates we spoke about earlier. Um, a lot of the machinery relies on salt water cooling. Um, so we've been busy cleaning all things like the heat exchanges and things, making sure we're absolutely top line of engineering standards are the highest they can be ready to go um, but that just gives you the sort of outlook from an engineering perspective of uh, where we are in preparations yeah thank you very much um yeah i finally just close and say you know what a huge privilege it is for me to to be in command of the ship and the men and women we've got here uh, i think we're planned to do about twenty six thousand miles altogether from may to december um you know over the 28 weeks that we're due to be deployed so uh you know, to sustain a strike group on the other side of the world is, uh, you know, not many people around the world can can achieve that. So, you know, we're very proud. Royal Navy is very proud at the moment of, of where we're at and the future is very exciting.